hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Zoo. Uh, I am LP Gomez, and today we are working on our Red Rocks Outback habitat. So uh, we've uh, been able to get a couple of wallabies here uh, in a trade that we made with uh, Zoo Jackson over in Wyoming. Uh, we uh, were able to send over uh, two of our uh, gray foxes uh, that we started with uh, for about uh, f uh, five, I believe, f uh, five kangaroos, one male and four females um, of the red-necked wallaby. Uh, and then, uh, very soon after, uh, I was able to secure uh, four uh, Tamar wallabies, which are a smaller uh, wallaby species that is more of a, a gray colored uh, wallaby. Uh, here in Lanza, we don't have a ta uh, Tamar wallaby mod quite yet, so I am using the Swamp Wallaby mod uh, created by Leaf, uh, one of the great modders that we have in the community. So wallabies are uh, what we call a macrobot marsupial, uh, which means that they have the a pouch uh, and they rear their young um, in that little pouch. So if you think about kangaroos and I think opossums as well here in North America, uh, they are what we call marsupials. And then a macropod is just a more specific uh, classification of your kangaroos, your wallabies, your, your uh, patamelons, uh, mostly Australian based animals. So yeah, a fun fact about the wallaby is that uh, a group of wallabies uh, is known as a troop or court of wallabies and an adult male is called a buck, a boomer, or a jack and the adult female is a doe, flyer, or a jill. Uh, in fact, I think one of our um, redneck wallabies, uh, which we got from Zoo Jackson, uh, is named Jack. Uh, that was named given uh, to him um, by uh, the zookeepers over at Zoo Jackson. And then specifically for uh, the Tamar Wallabies, uh, they're called Tamar Wallabies because they were once commonly seen in a Tama Thicket, which is a, a type of uh, shrubbery um, in Australia. And now moving into some of the uh, habitat design here, um, very much inspired by the Red Rocks area again. Uh, we are building in Red Rocks in Beyond Zoo, uh, which is a loosely inspired kind of version of St. Louis Zoo's Red Rocks zone. Uh, so. I was just at the zoo um, a couple days ago and we saw the wallaby area uh, kind of having this sort of red fence, uh, red, red fence slash gate that I wanted to emulate a little bit here in both the entrance to the barn uh, where they would sleep and uh, probably be housed when it's snowing and raining as it does here in Missouri. Um, it is not Australia, so uh, I don't even know if it snows in Australia. Someone uh, could <laughs> check me on that. That would be great. Um, yeah, this is sort of a dark red kind of color. I uh, wanted to carry that through in the, the wood and the brick. Um, yeah, you see me kind of doing a, a little bit of a, a white trim as well. I just give it a little bit more of a contrast. Yeah, in this build as a whole, I'm trying to do a lot more and not just stick to the red brick kind of uh, uh, texture uh, on my buildings. Uh, yes, can I have a lot of that because um, that's kind of what I associate a lot of St. Louis architecture to, to have is that kind of uh, classic red brick, but um, we might plaster over them or uh, paint over them. Um, so you'll see me uh, try to bring a little bit more variation in terms of the materials that I'm using in both new builds and uh, existing builds. I might go back and uh, do some renovations on, um, or remasters, uh, kind of updating the old structures like the flamingo habitat and the um, and the, the guest facilities that we have in the, in the front there. Uh, those are areas that I plan on retouching very soon. So yeah, again, kind of doing a little bit of uh, foliage work here with some broken, uh, broken trees and, and branches on the on the ground uh, as well as additional shrubbery just to give it a little bit of that outback feel. Um, I'm kind of going light on theming uh, in general in the habitats because I don't really see a lot of that in red rocks in general. Uh, however, I do uh, build out specifically for this uh, build a little bit of an outback pavilion area. Um, I see a lot of pavilions in the uh, 
uh, parks that we have here in St. Louis. So wanted to kind of pay homage to, to that idea, but kind of doing a fresh modern take on, again, just a way to frame the, the view a little bit, uh, as well as provide um, shelter for guests uh, from the heat. Uh, I'm sort of envisioning this uh, as a place where we might have education about Australian wildlife. Um, I know that I am working with an Australian zoo um, with the G-Rex's Bullabong Discovery Center to bring some education and even some live cams of um, of their facilities over there at Bullabong. Um, in the lore, I'm kind of uh, telling a story of how maybe Delta is hurting uh, to do flights out of St. Louis to Sydney. So as part of that kind of uh, marketing effort, uh, they approached Beyond Zoo and said, hey, um, would you work with some fellow ZSU Australian zoos to promote Australia, uh, Australian wildlife and specifically uh, sell tickets, uh, get, get, uh, get Midwesterners over to Australia for a summer vacation or something. Uh, so here I'm going to try out that uh, lattice roof uh, just to give it a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, a, a, a cool way to get light to shine through. And I think you'll see that right now on, on that arbor wood piece in the back where uh, some of those shadows kind of play really nicely and create a super cool texture. Uh, one that I am probably going to bring to other pavilions in the area. Um, uh, and yeah, and I've got one last thing to talk about uh, in regards to the habitat as we finish out that gate there, um, as well as some of this uh, outback theming. <laughs> I, I, know, I know I said uh, I went light with the theming, but I just couldn't help myself with all these uh, Australian pieces. And then I found this awesome uh, wood, uh, uh, this uh, wooden Australian map piece. Um, and integrated it into my pavilion. Uh, so yeah, with the habitat, one last thing. Uh, when I got these uh, wallabies from Zoo Jackson, uh, I had the chance to take a look at their uh, past habitat. And they use the carbon fiber pieces, the Australian carbon fiber pieces uh, in their build. So I integrated that sort of piece into the uh, feeding enrichment. Uh, I think it's a hanging barrel one. Um, in this village just to remind them of their uh, home back in Wyoming and you also saw me drop in those uh, basic wooden boxes um, I saw those boxes in the St. Louis Zoo's uh, wallaby slash kangaroo area and uh, while I am not 100% sure what they are for um, my guess was it was uh, little hiding places for the wallabies um, I added a couple of those just, just, to, just to, to pay a nod to the fact that that exists um, and I'm going to learn more about what exactly that's for if if you guys know um, why there would be a, a small wooden box in a wallaby uh, slash kangaroo enclosure do let me know because I am interested in saying why those are there because they seemed a little random to me <laughs> uh, yeah just doing a little bit of a gate here and uh, again the bedding uh, for that backstage uh, hey guys, uh, thank you for hanging out with us at Beyond Zoo. Um, we are back to a good schedule now. Um, I think we'll be posting videos uh, throughout the week, um, except for Mondays. I'm going to take Mondays off, um, and then we'll have a big kind of big one all as well on Saturday. I'm still trying to uh, figure out a good schedule. So uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, do you guys want to see more uh, build and talks like this? Um, or do you guys want to see zoo tours or um, more of our zoo cams? Uh, we haven't done a zoo cam in a while. We, we did that one flamingo one. Um, we could do one for uh, one of our other habitats here too. So uh, yeah, just leave a comment uh, so that I know what you guys want to see. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, uh, please do uh, uh, click that subscribe button. Uh, that's the best way to get notified when we publish new videos here on the channel. And it helps me uh, uh, better understand what you guys want. Uh, I think that's the one goal that I have with this channel is to uh, have more interactive 
audience participation and influence on the zoo. Um, yeah, uh, th that's what makes play uh, ZSU fun, and I want to invite you guys here on YouTube uh, to be part of that uh, fun as well, to influence uh, what we do here, what we build, what we're working on next. Um, and yeah, just uh, just get the conversation rolling, really. Um, yeah, just doing a little, little bit of uh, touching up on the pavilion. I really love this outback look. Uh, yeah, it's also very modern in its architectural shape. Uh, I, yeah, I guess the, the shape is very modern, but the materials are very uh, rustic. Um, and I love that a lot. Uh, I'm probably going to do something adjacent to that uh, on the other side uh, for the African section of the Red Rocks area. And uh, we'll kind of carry that theme through. I think this pavilion is uh, the original idea behind this uh, pavilion and Red Rocks is uh, we're seeing a bunch of animals that come from different places around the world, uh, different continents um, in one zone. And uh, this pavilion kind of intersecting the the Africa the and the Australia and hopefully soon the possibly an Asia section in the back. And also the the America section out there so I saw that um, kind of uh, talk about continental drift and Pangea and how uh, even though we have animals from all these different continents they're uh, they used to have a, a common kind of ancestry so uh, maybe we should you know uh, work together as people too right uh, across continents um, but yeah just doing a little bit more foliage work uh, It is really coming together. So uh, with that said, I will see you guys next time. Uh, we'll have some cinematics towards the end. Um, I hope you guys are. I hope that you guys will enjoy. And um, we'll see you next time. I think we'll be working on uh, possibly the American section in the back with the bison and wapiti. Uh, and we'll be finishing out Red Rocks with... Uh, peccaries, uh, South American peccaries, the camel uh, over there, as well as an empty, uh, as well as leaving an, an empty yard for our uh, Ethiopian yard. I really want to get Somalian wild asses into this build, uh, waiting for those to become available on ZSU. When they do, I'm gonna definitely go for them. So, so yeah, we've got cinematics coming up real soon, and I will see you guys next time uh, in the next installment of Beyond Zoo. Alright, y'all. Peace out.